Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from Tuguegro City, Cagayan, Philippines. This is your host, Bishop Philip Pataguan, and I would like to welcome everybody. Let's uh, come before the Lord's table as we enjoy the food of the Word of God today. And this is the first Sunday of October, and we're glad to welcome this new month. Though we are in the midst of the pandemic, it's, yeah, it's our privilege to be able to thank the Lord in all circumstances. And so, again, we would like to go with our theme for October, and this is our theme. God is our refuge. You know, I, I realize that the enemy is attacking God's people. The enemy has been uh, bringing troubles on God's people. The, the enemy has been uh, bringing a lot of uh, sorrows and problems upon God's people. And uh, I realize that there must be a word, there must be a good news in order to strengthen, to encourage, in order to, uh, yes, to uplift, uphold, God's people. That's why we would like to dwell with this uh, theme for the month of October that God is our refuge. Okay, and this will be our overall objective. All will run to God, all, whether you are yeah, children of God or not, okay? depending upon your status. All will run to God for refuge in times of trouble. There is no other way. There is no other one to run to but to God in times of trouble. Okay? And we will be seeing why. Okay? As we go on. Okay? And our session number one is, you know, I've been declaring this uh, in the past, time and again. And I would like to confirm it. I, I would like to strengthen it. I would like to establish it Session one will be this one. Troubles are good. I would like to say it again. Troubles are good. And we will be basing our, uh, yeah, our session number one in the book of Nahum, chapter one, verse seven. And of course, uh, we will also be basing on the book of Psalms. We are going to look at the testimony, the declaration of the psalmist regarding God being His refuge. Okay, and this will be our session one objective. Okay, all will understand, all of us will understand that troubles are good. For they come from God who is good all the time. Troubles are good. Again, because they come from God who is good all the time. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to attack the mindset of everybody. I'm trying to change the mindset of everybody. If your mindset is that troubles are bad, troubles are not good, then I'm going to change it. I am saying, I'm declaring, troubles are good. Yes. Okay? Thank you very much. And I would go with my introduction. God is a God who is all wise and all good at the same time. You can agree with me. You can say amen with me that that is true. And of course, he works in ways we may not like and we may not understand. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He is sovereign and he works in accordance with his own pleasure, okay? And let me say this, okay? Yet, because he is all good, yet because God is all good, all things, including troubles, or troubles included, will ultimately turn out for our own good and for our own benefit. Because God would always had a plan to give us the best status 
that we can get from Him. It will always be for our own good and for our own benefit. Okay. And we would like to go with my biblical foundation. Why troubles are good. Okay? So I would like to qualify that statement. Why? Okay? Of course, uh, Job chapter 14 verse 1 in the New Living Translation. In the New Living Translation, the prophet Job, okay, the patriarch Job, who was a faithful God's servant. And sabi niya, how frail is humanity? How delicate is humanity? How vulnerable is mankind? That's really very true. How breakable, how brittle is humanity? And he said, how short is life? How short is life? And then he said, and how full of trouble. You agree or not? I would like to agree with the prophet Job that life is short, life is frail, and life is full of trouble. But I would like you to know, despite this situation, I would like you to know that life is still good in the eyes of God. Yes. And then Jesus would say, John 16, verse 33 in NIV, in this world, you will have trouble. And so Jesus would, would, re would, would really say it. In this world, you'll have trouble. If troubles are not necessary in our lifetime, then Jesus would not have brought trouble. But he brought it. He declared it. And he brought troubles. Okay. And he says, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. There is so much substance when, when Jesus said, take heart. Why? Because when we take heart, the Lord is doing something. The Lord is working on the inside, on our, on, on our uh, person. He, he's doing something. That's why, take heart. I have overcome the world. And so Jesus would declare that troubles are necessary. By the way, if troubles are not necessary, life would have no power. Life would not be a full of challenge. But we would like to have a life of challenge. We would like to have a life of power. And the troubles in life would bring the power and the challenge that are necessary in our lifetime. And now we will look at how, yeah, yeah the, the New Living Translation would say it is, here on earth, it says, you will have many trials and sorrows. That's really very true. And how do you call COVID-19? Since February or March, this, uh, this coronavirus had begun. And until today, it had brought lots of sorrows, lots of problems, and to, not only to Filipinos, but to all mankind, to all peoples of the world. The COVID-19 has been a great tragedy for all of us. So the Lord just sovereignly brought the COVID-19 in our midst. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And I would like for the prophet Nahum to testify that despite troubles, life is good or troubles are good. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, the first statement, that's the, the topic sentence of the prophet Nahum. Ang sabi niya, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. That's the topic sentence of Nahum. And then he would say, a refuge in times of trouble. And so we see that the goodness of the Lord is stated in the context of troubles. A refuge in times of trouble. Why is the Lord good? Because He's a refuge despite us having troubles. We, we can run to the Lord. 
despite us having trials and sorrows, a refuge in times of trouble. So what makes the trouble good? The fact, the truth, that we have God as our refuge. And so the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares. Wow, I like that. He cares for those who trust in him. And so we see something in here that if we have troubles, the only thing we must do is to trust in the Lord because he cares for those who would trust in him. Wow. And so troubles are good. Why? Because we have a refuge in God and he cares for us all for as long as we continue to trust in him during our times of troubles. Amen. Yes, I've made my point. Okay, rejoice for God is our refuge. All right, the truth, the fact that God is our refuge is a cause for us to rejoice. Yes, despite the troubles. Okay, so let's see. In Psalm 46, verse 1, one of my favorite verse, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Wow. God is a refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Ever-present. He is the great I am. He is the Emmanuel that resides on the inside of us. And whenever we have troubles, all we need to do is to call on his name. Is to, yes, is to call on him. And the Lord is going to help us to deliver us in those times of our troubles, ever present in time of trouble. Wow, I like that, ever present, yes. And of course, we like to define refuse. What is refuse? What's the meaning of refuse? Yes, I, I'm, I'm basing, by the way, on the Hebrew word and on the Greek word, okay? I did not specify already the Greek word and, and the Hebrew word, but this is the meaning overall. Refuge, by the way, is a place of escape. It's a place of aid, a place of relief. Okay? When you are in trouble and you want escape, you want aid, you want relief, then you are seeking a refuge. Okay. What else? Refuge is a place of shelter. Okay? A place of shelter is a place of protection. It's a place of safety. Yes. And lastly, it's a place of asylum. Oh, we have heard of the phrase political asylum. When a politician commits, for example, a, a crime in his own country and he runs to another country, that country he's running to is called a place of asylum. It's a, it's a country of asylum. And by the way, in the Old Testament, when a child of God, yes, would commit a crime, especially murder, that is not done uh, intentionally, then there is a city of refuge. There is a place of refuge where he can run to and be saved. He will not be condemned when he would run to that place of refuge. In like manner, I would like you to know that God is our refuge. Whatever your sin or whatever your, uh, your, the, the wrongdoing that you have done, when you run to God, I'd, I'd like you to know that you will be protected. You will be sheltered. You will be helped. You will be uh, given relief. Yes, that's the very essence of a refuge. Okay, and we would like to go to the example of David, Psalm 57, verse 1. And he says, have mercy on me, O God. Okay, why would David ask for the mercy of God? He's in trouble. Yes. And he says, have mercy on me, two times. For in you my soul takes refuge. In you my soul takes refuge. And then he would go on to say, I will take Take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And so David would say, I will take 
refuge in the shadow of your wings means in the shelter of your protection. He would like to be protected in the presence of God. That's the very meaning of the shadow of the wings of God. Wings are a symbol of protection. Just like the wings of a hen. Okay? When the chicks would uh, run to the, to the mother hen and then, of course, the hen would, sp the, would spread her wings and he would, she would begin to protect the, the chicks, yes, under her. Until the disaster has passed. Oh, I like this. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. By the way, in our midst, what is the disaster? The pandemic, the coronavirus, the COVID-19. And there is no other place to run to. There is no other place to seek refuge but the Lord. It says dito, until the disaster has passed, until the pandemic has passed, until the coronavirus has passed, there is only one way, one place to seek refuge, and that's God, that's the Lord. That's the Lord, until the disaster has passed. In fact, even if, if, even if you not refer to the pandemic, whatever be your trial, whatever be your trouble, the only thing that you must do is to stick it out with God as your refuge until your disaster would pass. Yes. Psalm 62 verse 5 to 8. It says here in verse 5, again the psalmist, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. Okay, why was he saying about rest? Because he, he is in trouble. And there is only one place to find rest, and that's the Lord. Yes, my hope comes from Him. When we seek refuge in God, we find rest and we find hope. Yes, and then it says, He alone is my rock and my salvation. If there's one thing, if there's one that, we, that should be our rock, then our salvation, it should only be the Lord. And it says here, He is my fortress or He is my stronghold. I will not be shaken. What will shake us, by the way? Our problems, our troubles, our trials, our sorrows. But the psalmist would say, He alone is my rock. Speaking about rock, what, what, what does it signify? Rock is, yeah, is our foundation. Yes. And so, He alone, God alone is our foundation. He's alone, he, he alone is our salvation. He alone is our stronghold. And we will not be shaken. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, it says in verse 7, my salvation and my honor depend on God. And that is said in the context of He is my mighty rock my refuge. Yes, my mighty rock and my refuge. When we seek refuge in God, we have Him as our foundation. We have Him our, as our Savior. We have Him as our stronghold. We have Him as our hope. Wow. Everything that we need for as long as we find refuge in God. And it says in verse 8, trust in Him at all times. No matter what happens, in sickness and in health, in riches and in poorer, in adversity and prosperity, we trust the Lord at all times. O people, he says, pour out your hearts to Him. Pour out your hearts to Him. May mga, may mga kapatid tayo na inatake din sa COVID day. Okay? Nag-COVID positive. By, by the way, I would like you to know yung my, my daughter, my, my uh, doctor, okay? She was the first COVID positive case in Cagayan. I, I mean, as a doctor, as a doctor. That was March 21. But of course, when we heard that she was COVID positive on March 28, by the way, March 28, then we poured out our hearts unto God. We sought refuge in God. 
and then April 2, that is five days after F, uh, March 28, yes, she was swabbed and she was found to be negative. Yes, she was delivered by God. Why? Because during that time when she was COVID positive, we cried out to God. We poured out our hearts unto God and the Lord just delivered her. Glory to God. Yes. And so trust in Him at all times so people pour out your hearts to Him. By the way, meron pa tayo mga kapatiran, by the way, who are COVID positive. But thank God, God has delivered them already. Meron tayong couple, okay? But the Lord just delivered them already. They're about to, yeah, to, to get out from the hospital tomorrow because the Lord has delivered them. And they have poured out their hearts unto the Lord. They sought refuge in God, and God delivered them. Yes. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. God is our refuge. Yes. And it says here, Selah. God is our refuge, Selah. By the way, when we talk of the word Selah, Selah means forever. It's a Hebrew word which means forever. So we can say, God is a refuge forever. And it should be that way. God should be a refuge forever. We will not stop trusting the Lord. We will not stop seeking the Lord as our refuge. Yes. Hallelujah. And then, Psalm 118, verse 5 to 9. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, it says. He answered me, he answered by setting me free. In my anguish, I cry to the Lord. It's normal for us to cry to the Lord. Yes. Why? Because we are emotional beings. It's normal. But don't be stuck in always crying. Sooner or later, after pouring out your anguish to the Lord, sooner or later you have to rise up and claim strength from the Lord who is your refuge. Yes. And he answered by setting me free. He says, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Yes. Why should we be afraid when the Lord is with us during our ordeal? The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? Oh, hallelujah. Yes. The Lord is with me. Yes. We should always declare. We should always affirm the Lord is with us. The Lord is with me. He is my helper. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. There is no other result but victory for God's people. Okay? The, the, the worship group Elevation had prophesied through a song. It's called, I see a victory. There is no other way for us but to see victory, to see triumph on our enemies. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. Okay, never, never trust in men. You know, you can trust in men after praying to the Lord. Yes, pede, after seeking the Lord, you can. But never first put your trust in a man. Never. You, you could trust the Lord first, praying to, to, to Him. The Lord, will you use a man for me to be, to be delivered, to be comforted? Of course. Because God would always use instruments, human instruments, in order to uplift us. Yes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Yes. We would not trust in men and in princes. Okay. Princes are, are high people. Okay. Are, uh, are famous people, are princes. Okay. But for us only to trust in the Lord. Okay. I would like to cite the testimony of Pastor K. Singtan. While I was meditating, while, while I was finalizing on this uh, uh, sharing, he uh, texted me through Viber. And he testified that God is so good, that he has been so blessed by God. Wow. Despite his troubles, okay, 
And what were the troubles of Pastor Casington? By the way, Pastor Casington uh, came to our church about five years ago. About five years ago, and he did a seminar here. He is a philanthropist. He, uh, he does seminar in, in churches, in the body of Christ, and he spends his own money. Yes. And I met him about five years ago, and just this morning, we communicated through Viber, and this was his testimony. He had three life-threatening diseases. Yes. <laughs> what were they? Ito. He had a sickness that reduced him to just bones and skin. Yan ang unang uh, sickness na naranasan niya. And then ang sabi niya, pangalawa, his heart was diagnosed to be just 30% of the normal. Kailangan niyang ma-bypass. Kailangan niyang ma-heart transplant or, or bypass siguro. Okay? And then, yun ang sabi niya. And then, during the start of the lockdown, ang sabi niya, he had colon cancer. He had colon cancer. And so, three life-threatening diseases. And what was his testimony? Ang unang bunsod niya sa akin kanina is, what, 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 what did he tell me? Ang sabi niya, in all these three troubles, he sought refuge in God. And God healed him. God healed him. Anong testimony niya kanina? What was his testimony a while ago? And he, he testified, I am so blessed by God. That was his statement. I was so blessed by God. And sabi niya. And again, ito, ay nasa Bible niya. He is so good and faithful talaga. <laughs> he was so good and faithful talaga. Despite all the life-threatening diseases, this man of God would testify that God is good. Yes. And then, ang sabi niya, ito yung nasabi niya kanina, yeah, even if I die, to die is gain. Hallelujah. And so, if you were the one who would experience three life-threatening diseases, what would your response? What would your res your response be unto God? Yes, that's a great and a mighty challenge for all of us. Yes. In Psalm 27, verse 4, 5, and 6, okay, again the psalmist, okay, ang sabi niya dito in verse 4, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Maalala ko yung kanta <laughs> during the early years of soul winners. <laughs> I was a part of the music ministry, okay, and we have this beautiful song. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord. To inquire in His temple, the temple of the Lord. And I would like you to know that these statements are said in the context of God being a refuge. And to seek Him in His temple. It is said in the context of God being a refuge. It says here. For in the day of trouble, <laughs> wow, it is said in the context of troubles. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. That's a very positive statement. Yes, that's a very optimistic statement. In, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. And that should be our attitude. In the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. And so why worry if God is our refuge? Why worry if God has promised to keep us safe in his dwelling? And sabi niya, he will hide me. Wow. When we seek refuge in God, he will become a hiding place 
Many times I, I pray to the Lord, Lord, hide me. Hide me that I will not be put to shame. Lord, hide me and my family that we will not be put to shame. And he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle. Hallelujah. He will hide me in the shelter, in the shelter of his presence, ang ibig sabihin. And set me high upon a rock. Set me high upon a rock. In other words, when you are standing on the foundation of your refuge, that's the Lord, then he will set you high. He will set you high. He will uplift you. Yes. He will uphold you. Okay. And it says, Take, then my head will be exalted above the enemies. Okay? As we seek refuge in God, the Lord will just make our heads high, even in the midst of our enemies. Yes. And our mind will experience power and strength. Yes. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. Ang sabi doon, and at his tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Despite the trouble that the psalmist would experience, he would burst into shouts of joy. He would sing and make music to the Lord. Uh, we remember Paul and Silas that in the midst of their being imprisoned because of preaching the gospel, they would sing hymns of praises unto the Lord. And that's the best response, indicating indeed that whatever the Lord brings, even troubles, even if He would bring troubles in our midst, that the Lord is still good. Why? Because He's only thinking of what is best is only thinking of what is for our good and what is for our benefit. That's why God's people, ladies and gentlemen, troubles are good. Because God, who is all good, would bring it to all of us for a good purpose, for a great and a mighty purpose, and of course, if we look back, COVID-19 is still in our midst. We are to make the most out of it. Okay? The COVID-19 is here to stay. It's still lingering. Okay? That's why consider COVID-19 as a trouble that has been brought by God. And let's say COVID-19 is good. <laughs> Yes, remember natin yung topic natin, finding the good, uh, yeah, finding the good from the bad. Yes, there is no other way to see the uh, coming of COVID-19 but in the, through the eyes of gratitude, through the eyes of our blessedness, we say that the troubles we are in because of COVID-19 are good and it will be for our benefit and for our welfare. That's why I would like to conclude. Conclusion. <laughs> yes, this is my conclusion. And I would like just to let it sink again in the depths of your being. Troubles are good. I would like to say that again. Troubles are good. One more time. Troubles are good. Because they are allowed by God, who is all wise and all good, and whose only purpose is ultimately for our own benefit and good. Let's trust the Lord that during our ordeal, during our time of trouble, He's working something. He is molding us. He is shaping us. He's transforming us to be the person we must be in His eyes. That's why, thank God for a very mighty conclusion. Okay. And of course, we would like to personalize. Okay. I would like to connect 
the principle of gratitude. Okay? So, we can say in a personal way, looking through the eyes of gratitude, okay, remember Pastor Casing Tan, ano yung sinabi niya? I have been so blessed by God. And he would see his life-threatening diseases as a blessing. Okay? Looking through the eyes of gratitude, I declare troubles are good because they are allowed by God who is all wise and all good and whose only purpose is ultimately for my own benefit and for my own good. Ladies and gentlemen, bring home the revelation. Bring home the truth. The troubles are good. Remember Nahum, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who would trust in Him. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for a different mindset. Thank you for a different revelation, Lord. The troubles are good indeed. Yes, Lord, we are declaring troubles are not bad because you are not a bad God. You are a good God that would bring anything that would be for the best of your people. And because you are sovereign, you do as you please, O Lord. And so we say today, let your will be done because we know, O Lord, that anything that you will bring into our lives especially troubles, will ultimately be for our own good and for our own benefit. And so, Lord, not only that you would bless soul winners for Christ fellowship, may you bless also, Lord, all the members of the body of Christ, not only in Tugigirao, not only in Cagayan, not only in the entire nation of the Philippines, but also in the entire nations of the world. Thank you so much, Lord, for the revelation of the word today. Seal it, Lord God, upon our hearts. And so we will bring this revelation, Lord God, to others so that also they would say the troubles are good. And so, Lord, thank you so much. We give you all the glory, the honor, the praise, and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless us all. See you next time.